What's up guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be replacing the instrument cluster in my BMW 128i. Not because it's broken, but because I'm upgrading it. And this upgrade is good for any, I guess, enthusiast or performance driver. Because, you'll see here on the BMW 128i, this also works on the 328i. And other lower base models. It has, excuse my lack of plastic here, I was trying to do something, but it has a fuel gauge on the right and no gauge on the left. The 135i and 335i gauges, on the other hand, have the fuel gauge on the left and an oil temperature gauge on the right. Now I happen to have a 335i in there and the gauges are technically interchangeable. They don't fit, but they do work. So I took the gauge cluster from my 335i because I wanted to see if the oil temperature would display just on a whim, just to see if it'd work, low hopes, on my 128i. Because I can see the oil temperature on my phone using Bimmer Geeks Pro Tool with an OBD2 adapter, so I thought... Why not see if I can try to get it on the gauge cluster, which will make it way easier to do. And, yeah. So, spoiler, it did work. The oil temperature did display accurately. Double checking it with Pro Tool. So, I went ahead and got a 135i gauge cluster for about $60. And so, with the 335i gauges, I checked the fuel gauge does work, even though it's switching sides and the oil temperature gauge works. The only thing that I'm still kind of figuring out is that, well, the N52, which is in the 328i and 128i, revs to about 7,500 RPM, while the N54 and N55 in the 135i and 335i, depending on what year you get between the N54 and N55, revs to 8,000. So you'll see that 4,000 RPM is straight up, and on the 128i, it is about 3,750. So, this is a trade-off I'm willing to make for now. Um, the RPMs will be off by about 250, because you'll see the gauge goes all the way to 7,500 there, and all the way to 8,000 here. So, your RPM will be off by about 250, until I can, I don't know, figure out if I can get a correct faceplate for this, but then with the oil temp, with the correct RPMs for the N52. But anyways, I'm going to be installing this now. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make it easy to access the two T10 screws that are here. So I'm going to reach down to here, there's a lever, I'm going to pull it down, and I find it easiest to pull all the way out, and all the way down to give yourself the utmost amount of space to work with. Now, as I said, it's going to be two T or Torx size 10 screws. Now, if you have a 3 Series, this is going to be a bit more difficult. So, since I also have a 3 Series, I'll be showing you how to do it on the 1 Series first, and then on the 3 Series. What you're going to do on the 1 Series is just pull out like this. Then you can pull it all the way out here, and you'll see the connection. You just press the tab here, and pull the lever out, and this is actually going to push out the connector. Like that, it'll click, and you can remove the connection. Alright, so on the 3 Series here, the process is going to be ever so slightly difficult. Again, you want to pull the steering column out, and all the way down. There's going to be two T10 screws here. Now to get the cluster out on the 3 Series, it's going to be a bit more difficult. You actually have to not just pull it straight out, but you just have to kind of fold it like this. And then pull it out. Like that. Otherwise, the process is the exact same, and then you just put it back in. Like that. Now, it really is as simple as just swapping the new one in. So, make sure you have the connection in the correct orientation. Push it in, 
Now, sliding this lever while applying light pressure will get it in like so. Now, just make sure you don't pinch the cable or anything. And it slides right into place. All right, I'm gonna install the screws back in. And then we'll actually try it out. All right, now, spoiler, I already know, but let's see if it works. All right, so let's start it up and see the oil temperature gauge rise. All right, so I just started it. Now, let's see that oil temperature rise. So after seeing it digitally and it matching exactly, let's see if I can bring it up here a little bit more. I can say with confidence that this oil gauge does work and is accurate. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the very next one. Bye.